Uh, today uh, we're going to talk about uh, emotional stress. So what is stress? I divide stress into two forms. One is uh, what I call uh, outer stress and the other one as uh, inner stress. Now, outer stress is the usual stressful situations like somebody in the hospital, somebody lost their job, somebody got divorced, just the usual uh, stresses of daily life. Uh, these are stressful situations. They come and go, uh, but there's a, another kind of stress which stays with us all the time. I call this inner stress. It's there uh, even though on the surface uh, everything is uh, fine. Uh, this stress is uh, in the form of this kind of inner irritation, uh, just something is not right, a feeling of uh, pressured, uh, that feeling that you get that you have to be on time, and then, <laughs> and then this feeling of little annoyance, uh, uh, sometimes little anxiety, worrying, sometimes little sadness, and uh, so all this uh, uh, lack of uh, inner peace, lack of inner joy. So this is uh, what I call inner stress, and it's there all the time. So let's take a look at this uh, inner stress. Where does it come from? and uh, only then uh, we can do something about it. So, uh, on a personal note, a uh, few years ago, uh, I started, uh, I was suffering from uh, all this stress of uh, daily life, little annoyance, little irritation, what happened at work, what happened in the hospital, just the usual thing, uh, what's going on politically in the country, uh, just the usual thing. Uh, if Lakers lost their game, I'll get upset. <laughs> so, uh, actually what happened, gradually this uh, inner stress uh, uh, got worse and I started having uh, a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. So at that time I got serious, it's like uh, I did not want to take any anti-anxiety medications. Uh, I knew uh, they are totally superficial band-aid approach and have huge uh, uh, side effects. So I decided to look deeper uh, and uh, it happened a few years ago and fortunately I was able to find the answer. and. Uh, uh, I was able to take care of my inner stress and also uh, I impl implemented that in my practice and have been able to help a lot of my patients. What happens uh, when I get stressed out? This is the question I asked. Who is this I who gets stressed out? If I could figure this out, then I could get somewhere. Who is this I? Who am I in real? <laughs> this was a tough one. There was no answer. So, for tough, difficult diagnosis, we physicians we uh, employ a strategy called rule out. Rule out this possibility, rule out this possibility. Uh, it's a process of uh, exclusion. And um, so I utilize that. So I started looking at who I'm not. So with this uh, thought process, one day I went to a neighborhood park it was uh, in the evening, around sunset time, 
gentle breeze was blowing and uh, I was the only one in the park. It has beautiful trees. So I started pondering who I'm not. And in that way I can find out who I am. Now lots of thoughts lots of thoughts started coming. So this is how the thought process went. I'm not an endocrinologist in real because I was me, the true me, before I became endocrinologist. I'm not even a true husband because I was me before I got married. I was me before I went to college, high school, middle school, elementary school. I was still me before I started talking, walking, crawling, sitting. And I was true me when I was born. Wow! I was real, true me when I was born. And everything else I gathered along the way, so to say. So I was true me when I was born. And obviously, I didn't have a name. Therefore, in real, I'm not even self anxiety. So, with this realization, all the emotional pains of the past that self anxiety was carrying just went away, fell off. Once I realized I'm not self anxiety. So, self anxiety was carrying all those pains, all the past. self anxiety is worried about future. And I'm not even self anxiety. That was a very deep realization, a deep inner change. And with that, I got in touch with this inner peace. And I get in touch with that inner peace uh, anytime I want. Actually, most of the time I stay in touch with that inner peace. It was always there. I just found it. So, With this mindset, I came home, told this little story to my wife, and went to bed. Next morning when I woke up, I still had the uh, same mindset. And the next question was, so how was I when I was born? <laughs> So, of course, I didn't know how I was when I was born. Fortunately, I was in charge of a well baby nursery in my early career. And then I also had the opportunity to uh, have my own little baby. And uh, I'd taken actually two months off when our baby was born. So I could spend time with her and help my wife too. So when I re reflected back, this is uh, what I found. In little newborn babies, once their physical needs are met, like a full stomach, a warm blankie, 
and a clean diaper, just the very basic needs. Once those are met, babies are joyful from within, just like that. They don't say, oh mom, that milk was yummy, I want seconds. No, wanting more is not there. In fact, if you try to push or force feeding, once their stomach is full, they'll regurgitate. So they eat for physiological reasons, not for psychological reasons. That comes later. <laughs> In the same way, they don't say, oh mom, I don't like your milk. I like that formula milk better, or I like cow's milk better, or I don't like this, I don't like that. Doesn't exist. Liking or not liking does not exist. If that milk, whatever it comes from, mother's milk, cow's milk, goat's milk, formula, as long as it satisfies your hunger, you're fine. So. Babies are very practical, and they have no preferences. Well, I'm talking newborn babies. So, no liking, no dislikings. They also don't say, oh, mom, <laughs> I'm a baby girl, and you're putting this uh, blankie, <clears throat> which has dinosaurs on it. <clears throat> Don't you know, other kids will make fun of me. You should put a blankie with the pink butterflies on it. No, they don't have these concepts. They don't even have the concept that they're a boy or they're a girl, how they should be dressed, how they should not be dressed. Concepts do not exist. And why do I say that? You can observe it right now. Actually, where do the concepts come? Concepts come from thinking, right? Concepts come from thinking. Where do the thinking come? Thinking comes from language. Just observe yourself. Like right now, I'm thinking in terms of English. You are thinking in terms of English. If I was talking, for example, in Chinese, and you didn't know Chinese, uh, to you, those would be just sounds without any meaning attached. So, that's what language is. In real, these words, are sounds, but every sound has a concept attached, and you have to understand that concept, then it becomes language. So, in order to think we need a language, and because babies don't have any language, they don't think. And because there is no language, they have no concepts. They have no past, and they have no future, because there is no thinking. Free of past and future, they are spontaneously living in the now. That's why they are so joyful, so peaceful. No worries, no emotional pains of the past, no likings, no dislikings, no judging. Simply being in the now, peaceful, joyful. This is what true self is. I call it true self because this is the one you, me, everyone on the planet is born with. We could even call we could even call it uh, 
true human nature. So, or we can call it uh, the original true self. So, this original true self is the one we are born with and it is peaceful, it is joyful, it lives in the now, it has no past, it has no future, it has no name, it has no thinking, it has no concepts. Now, what, let's see what happened to this uh, wonderful uh, individual, a wonderful self. As we grow up in a society, another self develop, which uh, I call acquired self, because we acquire it uh, from society in which we grow up. We are not born with this. So this acquired self starts with our name, starts with language, and then comes all the concepts, all the information. We create our past, then we worry about our future. So this acquired self is the basis of all of our inner stress. And what happens, this uh, acquired self, as you grow up in a society, it gets up in the driver's seat, pushes away the true self onto the passenger seat, back seat, and then in the trunk. So as a grown-up person, we are totally identified with this acquired self. That's who we think we are. So in this way, this acquired self steals our true identity. And we pretty much forget that we have this true self. A lot of people have asked me that, okay, so, but do I still have that true self? Of course you do. <laughs> that true self is always there. It is just eclipsed by this acquired self. All of your attention is sucked up by this acquired self. And that's why that's who you think you are. And actually everyone around you in the society is also in the same mode. They are in the total grip of their acquired self. So you think that is normal and everyone around you is suffering from stress created by the acquired self. So you think uh, that's part of life. That's how life is. In fact, it's not. Yes, in the context of the acquired self, it is. But once you are free of your acquired self, there is no stress. So, once you are free of your acquired self and you are in touch with your true original self, there is no stress. Instead, there is this inner peace and joy. And it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs>